recording now. You're good to go. All right. Let me turn that. All right, hello, coming from Austin, Texas here. Feel free to chat and let me know where you guys are coming, you know, viewing this from and where you're crafting. Um, all right, and is the, is the audio okay for everybody? Because I hear somebody saying this, okay. All right, so today we are gonna be making the fun fall wreath with the origami paper leaves. Um, you might have seen this in the Michaels commercial. It was really fun creating this for them. And as you can see back here, I have the one that I had in the commercial, but I'm gonna show you how to make your own. And I obviously love colorful fall, lots of pinks and corals and mustards, but feel free to um, do this, whatever colors that you like, whatever fits your home and your decor. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just a craft, brown craft paper or muted creams. Or maybe you want all sort of shiny metallic gold or black and white, it all goes. So don't, don't um, you know, feel bad for like differing from what I'm doing. I'm just gonna show you my version of the fall wreath and then you guys can craft whatever fits your home best. So we're gonna begin by painting our wreath form. Sorry, wreath form. Um, I found these in the floral uh, department of Michaels. So there's several different kinds. This is an MDF form. I liked this one because it had a thicker edge that I could glue the, the paper leaves to. But if you cannot find this, they have several sizes. Um, as you can see, this one is a little bit bigger. Uh, you can also use a macrame hoop, which I believe is also in the floral department. This is for yarn crafting. You may also look in the yarn section. Um, this just has a smaller lip, so you have to kind of add more hot glue to get it to stick, but this will also work for your craft. Um, if you can only find the wire forms that are like multiple layers and thicker that are really meant for full coverage, you can use those. You'll just have to make more paper leaves so that it can completely cover the wreath form and disguise that um, and not really let any be exposed like this minimal one that I made. But they all work. Um, whatever you can get your hands on, use it. So we're going to begin actually by painting the form. If you're using a metal hoop, then you don't need, you can skip this step, but since we need time for the paint to dry, I'm going to start with that step so it can dry while we are making the flower, or the paper leaves. Um, again, any color paint, this is your choice, whatever you like. You want some warm cream tones or just black and white. I'm going to paint this one with a blush pink. This is just a, an acrylic craft paint, so Nothing special, just a satin acrylic craft paint in a blush pink color. And I should have, well, I'll take this piece of paper. <laughs> a little piece of scrap for me to pour the paint out on. Usually I just go straight from the bottle, but I will pour some out here to use. And if you have a workspace you don't want to get dirty, go ahead and put some paper or um, foil or something underneath your surface so that it doesn't get paint on it. This is my craft table, so I don't care if it gets messy. And this paint just wipes up with a Clorox wipe, so I'm good if it gets messy. We're just going to brush this on. So we have our first question. Are you ready? Yes. So they want to know, they have a wooden letter instead of a hoop. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, you can decorate, you can add, you know, it may be a little bit different process for how you add the leaves and the, for, the faux florals, but it could definitely work. You could do it off to one side or glue them from behind um, to create a little accent letter for your shelf or to hang up on your door. That would definitely work too. Awesome, thank you. And I can even show you, I have some here that I can grab a little bit later on when we get to the point where we're actually attaching the paper leaves to the wreath and I can kind of show you some ideas for how to attach yours to the wooden letter. Okay, that'd be great. Oh, cool. Somebody's making one out of popsicle sticks for their wreath form. That totally works also. See, this is the point where I show you the basics and then you get creative with it, you know? You, you make it your own. And whatever you have on hand, this kind of what the uh, time we're living in is, use what you've got and uh, get creative with it, right? Because I think this would be fun. You could even use like old book pages or newspaper pages for the leaves as well for a completely different look. So someone would like to know out. what diameter of hoop. 
Um, this one is a little bit smaller. This, I believe, is looks like a 12 inch. Um, the one that I have behind me, or here, let me, this size, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. This one looks like it's more of an 18 inch diameter hoop. But any size will work. I just like the larger, I like the larger ones personally because they give a little bit more substantial look to the door um, or wall. But it, I couldn't find another large one when I went back to Michael's. So I grabbed the smaller one. So now I can have different sizes, which would also be fun on a wall to have multiple sizes and different colorways as wall art. I was gonna say, it, you can also use um, cardboard. If you have cardboard, we keep, <laughs> we're getting a lot of shipments lately in this house. Um, so if you have some spare cardboard, you can always cut that into a hoop shape as well. Again, you probably just wanna cover it completely, um, not have any of it exposed. So you could probably skip the step of painting it. But you know, if you cut it well and you could paint it and make it not look like cardboard, uh, you could have the exposed edges as well. All right, so I am done painting my wreath form. I'm gonna put it to side to dry and I'm going to get a little wipe to wipe off this um, paint real quick. One second, <laughs> let me grab that. So I don't get that on my... I wanna get that paint on my paper that I'm just gonna fold. Clean that. Clean my work surface. Um, I'd love to know what colors you guys are using on your uh, hoops or your wreath forms. Let's see. So, um, let's see. Is there a Middle. PDF instruction for this class? There is not. I don't believe that there. I mean, I haven't written one. I I think I did give a tutorial to Michaels for part, as part of the commercial, and I'm not sure where that ended up. So I did write out instructions, but I'm not sure where that ended up on your site. So gotcha. you might have to search for that. Yeah. But this if, class if, will, though, be recorded and will be online afterwards, so you can always come back to it to view if you need. Absolutely. And if there wasn't a PDF attached to the email that you received, then there's not one for this class at this time. So we've got some people using copper. Um, Leah is using terracotta. Oh, that's fine. Carlene is using navy, pink, and white. That'll be pretty. Nice. I like. I love pink for fall. I mean, I love pink for every season. So <laughs> don't ask me about that. All right. See, so clean, ready to go on to the next step. I did see somebody had a question about. Um, they have a metal frame thing I don't know where it could you preview the next step so I can get prepared. So um, the next step will just be creating the paper leaves, but this is the the hoop that I think she's talking about, which will work and it will show you whenever we start to glue on, I'll glue some on that one as well so you can see how it works. Um, but is there a template um, for the so, leaves? So, sorry. Some of the comments. Um, so now we're going to start with the leaves. So these are the origami leaf shapes. They're super easy to make and you can do them in a bunch of different sizes and different colors. It's really up to you and again, what you like and what goes with the color palette that you chose. Uh, this is cardstock paper. Um, you can use either eight and a half by 11 or the 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. Either of those work. So does regular paper. It does not have to be cardstock, but the cardstock is a little bit more sturdy. So it, it um, holds up a little bit better but feel free to use regular paper if that is all you have and in whatever colors you choose. So um, I will get started with a yellow leaf and this is 12 by 12 cardstock um, scrapbook paper. I just got this in a bulk pack at Michael's of all the different colors of the rainbow and just kind of pulled out my favorites to use for this wreath. So what I'm gonna do is just fold it in half to create that triangle shape and then I'm going to cut it down that seam that I just folded so that I get two triangles and that will create two different leaves. Do you want to hear more about some of the colors while you're cutting? Huh? 
talk more about the colors? No, I said, do you um, want so I chose they're letting us know about their colors? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear what colors everybody's using. Awesome. So Bridge is using all shades of sea blues. And Ooh, nice. we've got someone probably using classic fall colors. Somebody stained a wood embroidery hoop, Gloria, and um, she's going to use brown, gold, greens, and oranges. Ooh, I'm excited to see everybody's uh, wreaths at the end and see all of those colors in person, and see what they all yeah. look like. But see, there's so many options for, you know, making this your own, which is what crafting is, you know, that's, you don't have to go with what's off the shelf. You can craft it and make it fit your home perfectly, which I love because again, my color palette is a little bit out of the norm, what you can find ready made. So I love creating and crafting my own version of things so that it fits my colorful home. <laughs> okay. So sorry, I just started crafting. So we're going to start at the bottom of the triangle and we're just doing an accordion fold. So just a back and forth accordion fold. So I started about half an inch. Don't feel like you have to measure this, just kind of eyeball it. You don't want it to be super thick or else you won't get very many folds in the triangle. Um, but you also don't want it to be super thin or else it's really kind of hard to do with the accordion folds. So roughly half an inch, but feel free to eyeball that because it does get wonky as you fold and that's totally okay. It's not a precise uh, craft. So I just folded it up and I turn it over and I fold up that exact amount again and push that seam down all the way across, fold it over and do the same thing. All right, Is there and we're gonna keep a working specific our way. paper brand that you prefer? Nope, I just always go by the color. So I'm like, oh, I like this color. I really like just like the open stock paper. I'll grab, you know, the, the, my preferred colors, the corals and the piece um, that I like so that I just get all of those great ones. But um, I honestly am not, I don't have any preference on paper brands. Um, I feel like they all work well for this craft specifically. Okay, so I'm continuing to just back and forth, turning it over, accordion fold, push it down, back and forth. And do that until you get to the very end of your triangle. And as you can see here, this is one side, you can see all of those accordion folds. The other side is completely flat. That's the long end that we started with with the fold. Now you're going to fold it in half. So you can kind of use this last triangle as the guide as the middle. And you're just gonna fold it in half and kind of match up those end points. And as you can see now, the leaf is already taking shape. And so what we just need to do is put a little bit of glue here on this to glue it together to create our leaves. So I'm going to use hot glue because it sets really fast, but you can also use white glue. You just may need to use a paper clip or a binder clip or something to hold it into place while it dries. Um, same thing with a glue stick. That will also work, but it, you may just need to hold it in place a little bit for that glue to adhere. That's why I like the hot glue. This is just a low temp one, which also works. Um, so if you're doing it with kids, um, you can use a glue stick or you can use a low temp glue gun but it just binds it a lot faster. Um, but any glue works. And now you have your leaf shape. So this is the large leaf that is just half of a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And now I'm going to show you this. I'm gonna show you a gold one. So this is an eight and a half um, by 11 sheet of paper. This is a gold foil one that I found, which is really fun. So for this to get your triangle, again, you're just gonna fold from one corner to the side. And you'll have this little strip left over that we're going to cut off and then we'll cut our triangle shapes. So really pretty simple. You just want that uh, equilateral triangle there. And so I'm just going to cut this off. Again, the, this craft is very forgiving because you do not need to fold all of those leaves at the exact same dimensions or widths. Um, they can all have different size folds. They can all have different size triangles, so it's great for using up your scrap paper. Maybe you only have a little triangle left, or you can make a tiny little leaf to add to it. Um, it's really kind of whatever goes. So now I cut that in half and I have two triangles. And now these, as you can see here, are a little bit smaller than the 12 by 12. Um, so it'll just create a smaller leaf. 
So can you tell us what the size yeah. of the original orange paper was? It was 12 by 12 to begin with. So I just cut that directly in half. Um, so it's 12 inches by 12 inches. So now this is 12 inches, this is 12 inches. And if you can do the uh, a, a squared plus B squared equals C squared, you can find out what the <laughs> length of that one is. I cannot I'll, do that. I'll work on head, that. So I'm not that exact. I believe it's like 16 inches or something, <laughs> but um, it, again, it's just a 12 by 12 cut in half. Um, and then this is the eight and a half by 11, fold it over to create those two triangles a little section cut off the end of that so that it would become a square an eight and a half by eight and a half inch square and then that cut in half so now i'm going to again do the rough half inch fold on the paper now if you are using regular paper and not like a thicker card stock this folding process is a little bit simpler because you're not having to press as hard to fold um, because the paper is thinner but um, so I think that would be the only caveat with your paper is you don't want it to be too thick um, or else you can't get all these little folds in there, but cardstock works just fine. But like I said, you could use newspaper, book pages, magazine pages, you could paint, um, you know, newspaper and use that or you can use just regular paper. Okay, so again, I've, I've done the accordion fold throughout this triangle. And now I'm just going to fold it in half that long side of the triangle together. And I have another leaf and this one is a fun gold metallic leaf. And then I'm just gonna do, again, put the glue right down that seam on one side and pinch it together to seal that leaf and create that leaf. So, Someone wants to know if you have any ideas for what that, that piece of scrap paper that you cut off could be used for. Yeah, um, so you could actually make a teeny tiny leaf by folding little triangles out of this if you wanted to. Or one thing that I thought would be fun, which I was just doing while we were waiting for the class to start, is if you put a strip of hot glue here um, and form it around, you can either use this to cover like a votive candle holder, like the glass votive candle holder, make a fun little luminary, you can punch holes in it so the light shines through, or you can use this as a napkin ring and glue one of the little flowers that you've made to the top and use that as a napkin ring for um, fall dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, something like that. So that's Very cool, thank you. Way to use up those scraps. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you one more leaf. Um, so if you only have 12 by 12 paper and want to create various leaf sizes, then what you're going to do is, again, cut it in half, but then you can take one of those triangles and actually fold that in half and create two more so that you can get one large and two small leaves out of one piece of 12 by 12 paper. Now, the amount of leaves that you put on your wreath really just depends on what you like, but I do like the variation of sizes. So I tend to do several sizes so that I can layer them and um, create a little bit of visual interest in the wreath. Um, so I like doing this so that I can get three leaves out of each color of paper and then I can just do one sheet of paper for each leaf, or I mean one sheet of paper for each color and then have three leaves in that color that I can use for my wreath. Now, if you're gonna be covering your whole wreath or you have a really big form, you may need to do more than that. So it's really just up to you. And as you make the leaves, you can kind of lay them out on your wreath form to see how it fills it up. And if you need to make more, just keep on folding. Now, if folding is your thing or you want to try something else, um, if you go to the, my camera front view, the leaves behind me, I just used like a Cricut maker, a Cricut machine to cut out uh, the same cardstock. I used some glitter cardstock and just some other solid colored cardstock to cut out leaf shapes. You could also do that for this wreath. You don't have to do this origami uh, style leaves, but you can do the cutouts and kind of give it a different look as well, or maybe add all of them together for a fun, um, a fun assortment. I really just like these origami leaves because they give a lot of texture with those folds. It really kind of gives like a textural element and a little bit of a 3D element to the leaf, but you can also do some cutouts as well. So 
Okay, fold that. And there we go. So if they don't have 12 by 12 paper, is it okay if they just use regular eight and a half by 11? Yep, yeah, eight and a half by 11 works. I mean, any size, you just wanna get a, a triangle. So say you just have like a scrap piece, which I did earlier, I think I threw it away. This was actually from a scrap piece of paper that I had used earlier and there was like cutouts out of it, but I was able to get a triangle shape. So I just kind of used one of, the, one of my other triangles as a template, stuck it over there and was able to cut out a triangle and so I can use up some of those scrap paper too. So you really just want a, an equilateral triangle um, from your paper, whatever paper you are using. So any size works and then you can just get the different sizes of leaf as you can see. So we have the leaf that's half of a 12 by 12 and this is probably about six to eight inches once made and then you have the half of the half, so a quarter of a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And this one looks like it's roughly four, I would say four inches. And this one looks pretty much the same size as that, maybe just slightly bigger. And this is from the eight and a half by 11. So it's the eight and a half, um, once I cut it down to the eight and a half by eight and a half square um, and cut that in half triangle. So I have a whole bunch of different. So you're just gonna wanna keep making these. Um, I'm going to take my wreath form Kind of start placing them on there to see if I have enough or if I want to add any other colors. I may add some more darker pinks in here. Um, but I'm just going to kind of get a little bit of a visual of what I've done so far and see what I need to still make. So yeah, I think I'm going to add some more of the darker pinks in here. So I will make another set that you guys can follow along with too. I have some pre-made already, um, just so that I can kind of show those to you. But if there are any other questions, um, please let me know right now so I can do that while I am making more leaves. Gotcha. So they would like to know um, about how many leaves do you want-ish? So again, it, that will kind of depend on one, how full you want your wreath to be and how big, um, how big your form is. So for this smaller, for this smaller 12 inch one, it looked like I only needed, I mean, this is, that's four, five, maybe seven or eight leaves. Um, for the bigger one, you're going to need, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, let's see. 10 or 11 on that on the uh, 18 inch and that is you know asymmetrical so it's only covering a portion of the wreath so if you wanted to cover your whole thing um you're going to need a little bit more but like i said i think just kind of do what i did and wreath out and as you're making the leaves kind of place them and see okay i need some more big ones or i want some more of this color in here because i have too many uh, i have too many yellows all close together so i need to break that up um and just kind of visually lay it out before you start gluing them down to kind of see what you need. And about how many different sizes do you like to go with? Is it the three? Is it okay to go with just the two? Um, yeah, I, I usually just go with the two, but if you're trying to use up scraps or you want even more variation, you can, you can cut this in half and make an even tinier one. I feel like the, the smaller you go with this cardstock, it becomes a little bit difficult to give um, a good fold because the smaller the triangle, if, for example, if I were to cut this one in half and try to fold it, I, gotta, I would have to do a smaller than a half inch fold in order to get enough folds across that leaf. And then it just becomes a little bit difficult to work that tiny with cardstock. Now, if you're using paper, you could probably go smaller, but I think just the two sizes works to give a little bit of variation there. Um, so now this is probably about a quarter inch fold with this smaller triangle because it is tiny and I want to make sure that I have enough folds across it to really give that leaf shape. Um, but it is doable. I think, I don't know that I could go much smaller than this though <laughs> and make it work. So I think you're kind of limited to those three, but it's really whatever you feel looks good. So there you go, it's a tiny, a tiny, tiny. So the leaves that you already have stacked, it looks like you glued them together. 
these are these are glued together. That's for a later, um, whenever we start assembling them to the form. I don't know if I can show you that right now. Or I mean, I'll show you that when we get to that step. But uh, yeah, these two are glued together. Just I had I had them on a wreath that I pulled apart. So they are still glued together. I don't want to ruin them. Gotcha. Any other questions or anything about the folding? Anybody need help? Could they possibly use paint or spray paint on the paper to make yep. some of the leaves pop? Yeah, you could definitely do that. It would be fun to do like a little bit of a gradient effect on some of them to give them that like turning colors look, you know, for some of the fall leaves. But yeah, you could definitely hit it with some spray paint or paint on the um, some acrylic paint on the um, edges of the leaves or however you want to do it but yeah or if you can't find the perfect cardstock color feel free to paint it and then fold it into that leaf pattern or that uh, fold it into the leaves so Anne is wanting to know if you have any advice um, for when you don't get all of the edges perfect when you fold she's got um, some of the tips are not symmetrical yeah, so if you actually look here, um, let me see if I can bring that up closer to the camera so that it can be seen a little bit better. Um, my, it's not perfectly folded. Like if I lay this flat, you can see as I go down, I actually get a little bit wider and wider. It doesn't matter once, um, you can't actually, you don't notice that. And then at this one, you can see that it was, it was a little bit longer and I just kind of folded it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect and it's not exact. That's why I say it's very forgiving craft you just want to make sure that it's an accordion a back and forth fold um, and then even here where the the tips of the leaves are um, I don't know if you can see this this one is shorter than this one when I fold it in half but once I glue it you really can't tell either so there is no need to to worry about being exact with this just have fun and <laughs> and craft um, and it's especially once you start assembling everything, you, those little details just aren't noticeable. If it really bothers you, like my daughter, she said, no, I need that to be exact. You can cut it off. I mean, make it, you can make it exact there at the end. I mean, that works. So um, however you are, whatever you, you know, prefer, but I, not, I don't worry about the little details. Make all, you know, like that overall look, nobody's going to be sitting there staring at me. I'm like, mm, this one's not even, I don't like this one, so um okay do you guys feel comfortable on the leaves do you feel like you have maybe seven or eight um that you can start we can start gluing them onto the frame or do you want me to fold some more with you um just let me know if there's any yeah okay i think we're i'll do one more so let everybody kind of get their leaf shapes and get enough that they can start gluing them onto their form um, I think it would also be fun to do just like if you had regular paper and maybe use some like you could tie dye paper and make some leaves that way you know tie dye's like been really fun but you don't have to just do clothing you can do paper as well and just crunch it up and add some of that dye to it and then let that paper dry and use those to make leaves that would be a fun fun option as well. I also did, um, not that Christmas trees um, are a thing, but you can uh, right now, but you could do these for your tree and just kind of tuck them in there as well in some holiday colors. I did a fall tree a few years ago with an orange tree and I just made a whole bunch of these leaves and I used faux florals and these leaves to decorate the tree and that was really fun. It was just like the whole tree was like changing colors and shedding its leaves for fall. So another fun option for those. I also think these smaller ones would be cute as like little hair clips. You just like put a little barrette on the back and make a little hair clip out of it. All right. Okay, I'm going to start assembling them on my um, MDF wreath form, and then I will show you how to do it onto the gold macrame hoop if you have that instead. Um, so again, so I'm just going to set my form here, and then I'm just going to kind of play around with the leaves that I have made and kind of place them and see what I think looks good. Um, for because this is more asymmetrical and I'm not covering the entire wreath, I want the ends to both be leaves pointing up. I don't really want to start one end with a leaf going down. 
So I'm gonna kind of go work from both sides and work down to the middle, the bottom middle of the form. And what I like to do is start with some of the bigger leaves at the, um, at the beginning and then layer on those smaller leaves. So I'm kind of just kind of getting a visual for how I want to place them and then I will come back and start gluing them into place. Does the paper need to be the same color on both sides or just the front? Um, if you're having, if you're just having this against the wall, it, it doesn't matter. You can't see the other side. I did use some, like this is a paper that was um, double sided. So it does, um, but like these have just like the craft on the back, but you can't see it. And once it's glued on there, you won't be able to see the back of it. So it, as long as one side is pretty, you're good. So I think I'm good with the number of leaves I have and kind of have like an idea of their placement. And I'm going to now take my glue gun. And now this is where you really do need the glue gun. I don't think that the glue stick or regular glue will work or really give you that bond that you need. So you kind of do need a glue gun. Um, and I'm just gonna start by gluing the leaves down and onto my form. And so I'm really just adding hot glue here and a good amount of it and just try to get that adhesion to the leaves. Now, because they are accordion folded, they're not a flat surface, so that's why you kind of have to add a lot, and that's why I like these MDF forms, because they do have a wider base that I can glue the leaves onto. But as you can see here, the only parts that's actually touching the leaf form are these ridges, so that's why I want to make sure that I have enough glue there to really keep them on the form and bound on there. And so once it's set, that one is, then I'm going to layer on a few of my other colors. And as I layer these on, I will glue them to the, as well as to the form, I will also glue them to the leaf below it so that it really kind of gives it a little bit more sturdiness. Is there a specific place that you're gluing the two together that you like line up or something? No, just where they hit. So I just kind of want it to be asymmetrical here. And so I'm like, okay, this, if I put it on top and it hits here, then I'm going to add a little bit of glue here and kind of pinch it together so that it, it sticks. Um, now you don't want to kind of put the glue on the top of the ridge where it would actually touch the other leaf, um, not in between the creases, but I'll show you once this one dries. Let's see. See that one, I added all the glue and it didn't even touch. <laughs> it didn't even touch there. So. That's where you kind of have to just like pinch it and fold it into place. So do you think the E6000 glue would work instead of the hot glue? Uh, um, I don't think it would simply because it takes so long to actually harden and cure on them. Um, it would be hard to build unless you wanted to like glue one, let it sit for an hour or two and then come back and glue another leaf. It would just make the process a lot longer. Same with, you know, it's the same as any sort of white glue or anything like that. While it would work maybe it's um it just takes too long for it to harden up so you can see on the back here um this pink leaf is glued to the form and it's also glued to this blue leaf just let's see if i can get i don't know if I can really get an angle but it's glued right underneath where they, they touch yeah. and then i'm going to add on another one now this one won't touch the wreath form at all so this one is going to be purely glued to the, the leaves underneath it and I'm just kind of like seeing where they meet up. I'm gonna pull up the glue gun away, add a little bit of glue there. Feel free to be very liberal with your glue so you can get that stick because it's, it is a little bit difficult because they are three-dimensional um, to figure out where they will stick to each other. So I always just make sure to add a lot of glue. It's hidden back behind there so nobody can see it. It's okay if it looks like a mess from, from behind or in between the layers, it's not gonna be seen. So again, I don't know if you've ever had this problem. I've had E6000 glue like eat through a styrofoam plate. So I don't know how good it would do on paper. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. Styrofoam is hard because a lot of things will eat through that. You kind of have to use a styrofoam glue specifically made for it. But yeah. um, like sprays will eat through styrofoam. But see, so, you know, like 
I think it's like really just how many leaves you want to add because I already think that that looks super just on its own with just three leaves on there. So it's really what you visually think looks amazing and love. Um, because I think that would be cute and then add, you know, maybe a little flower or two and you're done with that. Um, but I'm going to add it and kind of mimic the one that I made that you guys saw. And so now I'm going to start on the other side. I've kind of got a few coming down here. And now I'm going to start on the other side and come from this angle down towards the center. Again, lots of glue in there. And kind of fold it into place, push as many seams on there as you can, and kind of fold it until that sets. All right, were there any other questions or anything? How would you, okay, um, how would you, like, I see this one about how placing leaves if you help cover the entire form. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would do is kind of work up both sides a little bit um, more. Again, still coming from the bottom upwards. And then once you get to the top, just kind of overlapping the ones at the top a little bit. But as you can see here, it's just kind of doing like this. So they're both coming from the bottom, middle, going outwards, and then coming up and kind of meeting. And then you can kind of overlap as you see fit here at the top. But I think that would look cute too. And then you just kind of want to visually fill out if you have, you know, I don't have enough to do that, but some bigger ones and some smaller ones so that it's not, like right now you can see it's really heavy down here, but it's really thin up here. So you want to kind of shift that and maybe add a, a bigger leaf there. But that would be the process for doing a whole, um, covering the whole thing. We do have someone who's interested in how to place the leaves on a letter. On the letter, yes. Let me, let me grab one real quick for you. So this is just like a paper mache letter um, X, but process would be the same for a wood one. Um, so now if you have this and this was the front that you painted or whatever, you could have some of the leaves coming off to the side here and overlapping the top a little bit, but so that you could still see the letter and maybe just come from one side only. Or which might be fun is turning it over and gluing them from the back so that it, they're kind of peeking around the letter so that whenever you turn it over, you still get that leafy, oh, they're flipped, let me see. This. So you still get that leafy look, but it's coming from behind that letter and you can kind of fill in that whole, you can fill in that whole thing so that the letter really pops and glue those all to the back of the letter like that. So that's another option. And then you could even add some of the, the, the florals to the letter itself once you're done or kind of tuck them in there between the leaves and the letter. That Great. And how about the wire form? Yeah, so let me get to the wire form. Okay, so it's really kind of a similar process for the wire form, um, except that instead of trying to add the glue to the wire form, um, actually, yeah, I'm saying, what I might do is add a little bit of the glue to the wire form. It's really thin, so it's hard to get it right on there and place the leaf on. But then what I'm gonna do is what, when it's steady, I'm gonna hold this and flip it over. And I'm going to take, because it's really not that um, thick of a, a base, I'm gonna take the hot glue and go over the wire form to kind of create this glue almost, I don't know, like, almost like wiring it on, but instead of wiring it on, doing it with glue. Now the glue is touching the leaf on, on the side and on both sides, and then it's going over the frame itself. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, but to, to describe it, it's just like, it's completely encasing that form and attaching it to the leaf. So the leaf is really stuck on there. Um, again, this probably is not one that you're gonna wanna put out where you can see the back, but I mean, if you needed to, you could always attach another leaf to that if it's gonna be like hanging in the air or something. But then uh, that leaf will really um, stick onto that wire form because it's really like encasing it onto the leaf instead of just trying to stick it to that thin little form. So that's kind of how I would do the wire form. But now you can see it's 
it's really stick, stuck on there. It's not going to come off. Um, and it really hasn't fully dried yet. All right, so let me finish out adding my leaves to this and then we can talk about adding the, the florals and then I can see what the projects that you guys have been working on. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the gold in here and maybe some of these fun, the baby leaves we made, so I like the tiny. This is really the point where you're going to just kind of visually play with things and see how they look. You know, step back a little bit, take a look at it. Does it, you know, does it look too heavy on this side? You need to have some coming off the other side, creating that, that visual balance, if you will. And... my phone? That no, <laughs> that was mine. Okay. It's on disturb. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was like, I think it's on, not disturb. <laughs> All right. Um, here we go. Okay, so as you can see here, like I just kind of wanted to balance it. Like there's, it's balanced on the bottom here. It's balanced on the sides. Um, there's not, you know, overly top heavy or overly heavy on one side. And so I kind of have my form. And now I'm going to add the, the faux florals. So Michael's has a huge selection of faux florals that I love. Some of them are so realistic looking, like I really love this like anemone. But any sort of flowers that you like, the color scheme that goes with your wreath, and even some fun like little um, sprays and stuff like that. So um, again, these are just gonna be hot glued on. I'll do these smaller ones first and then I'll add the flowers over it so that you can't really see that stem portion. But you're just gonna kind of visually see, you know, lay them out on top, see what works. Maybe you need some smaller ones to fill in. You need a few of like the little buds um, to glue in there. You kind of just see what looks good and then start gluing them down. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Blue around. So just to, to take them off, like as you can see here, what I did is just, I mean, it's, they're really just kind of easy to just kind of grip the, the flower stem and pull that off. And then you'll just add some glue around the base and stick that in there. And you can kind of nestle it in those little ridges of the leaves to get a good, um, get it good, get it adhered well <laughs> to the leaf. And just add some hot glue in there. Hmm? I was going to say, do you have any suggestions for Marcia? She's got cardstock that seems to be too heavy, and she's having a problem folding it together to glue it. The long edges. Okay. Folding so, it to glue um, it. oh, to like folding it in half. Yeah. Um, like leaf one option would be to to create. Um, so what's happening, I think, is that it's just too it's too thick. Probably once she's created those folds. Mm -hmm. So you could do a thicker fold. So maybe don't go half an inch, maybe go three quarters of an inch. So you don't have as many folds that you're trying to fold it, to, as many folds to fold in half. Um, let me show for example. Okay, so for this one, if you, you know, maybe fold it at a half an inch, you're gonna get 10 folds out of it, which will make that end result very thick. So maybe go a little bit thicker. Um, you won't have as many folds in your leaf, but it'll be easier to fold in half at the end. So this one is maybe a little under an inch fold. It'll still work and it'll still create that leaf shape. But now instead of having to try to fold, you know, five or six layers of, of the paper together, I'm only having to fold the three. And it makes that folding a little bit easier. Now, if you have something like a pair of scissors or a credit card, you can also hold that there and push and use that to kind of push down that seam to really create that fold. And then you can, you can press on that to adhere it to if the paper is really too stiff for you. So as you can see, this will still create that leaf shape. It'll just have less folds than the, um, than the, if you folded it with a smaller 
fold size. Gotcha. And if you put this wreath outside, like on your door, on your front door, will it get soggy? If you do not have a covered porch, yes, it will. So you can um, hang it inside on your wall, above a bar cart, um, on an interior door. Um, I think it's fun sometimes to like decorate your home by putting it inside on like maybe a bathroom door or something like that. Or maybe you could make it for your kids and put their, you know, their initial in one of the um, paper mache letters or wood letter on it as well for their front door. Um, um, or yes, if you do have a covered porch, it should be fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is paper. So if it rains on it, it it's in a place that it's going to get wet, it will get soggy. All right, so I'm going to add my last, turn the glue stick in, my last flower to this one. And there you go. So I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit so you can see it. But um, there's my finished <laughs> wreath. And you know, feel free, like once you're done, if you need to like add a few more flowers or come from behind and add another leaf or tuck that in there or something to make it really balanced, you can always do that. Um, as you saw at the beginning, some of these leaves were on a form and I just pulled them off. So if it doesn't look right and you get to the end, don't hesitate to pull off some of those leaves and start over or just kind of replace them with new colors like oh maybe there's too many pinks here I'm going to take this one off and stick a yellow in there um, that works and then wherever you go to hang it you can use a string or a wreath hanger and you can hang it directly vertical or asymmetrical if you want it you know tipped a little bit to the side but I think that that is um, that's that and if you guys want me to see anything else let me know so I can show you um, some other ideas so this is the so the we've got some people asking if you know about the origami paper flowers and if you use those sometimes as well uh, yeah you could definitely do that this one i wanted to have like the that fall look with the leaves so this would be like the napkin ring here which would be really cute i think um but yeah you could definitely do an origami flower or a paper flower instead of the faux florals if you wanted to add that instead um, that would probably be a whole other class, and I'm sure Michael's has some on that. But you just, to, to create like the faux floral, you would just need some petal shapes. And then you would just kind of fold those and glue them all together to create your, your floral, you know, your flowers. I'm not sure if I could do an origami flower, but paper flowers are pretty simple. And you could always add that, or maybe in the spring you want to take off the leaves and you want to do a spring floral wreath with paper flowers you could always do that as well and someone wants to know if they were to put a word on their wreath like welcome or home um yeah. would they glue the words like the letters directly to the hoop or would they glue them on top of the leaves how would that work um it would depend on let me see i can grab i have a i think i have a, a word here let me see depends on what kind of word you're using Let's see. For example, <laughs> I do have a lot of options. Okay, so this is a wood sign that just says love on it. This is more of like a gold hello. You could also cut it out of paper or something similar to that, um, depending on the size of your form and your wreath. So for example, like the hello, I would maybe put it here on the leaves themselves because it's a little bit smaller and I can't really, I could maybe tie it up here and suspend it. That would be an option. It's just what you think looks best or you could try to glue that and nestle that in there. Something bigger like the love, you can maybe glue that directly across on the form itself. And I would actually start with that and then work around that with your leaves if you were to do something with lettering or with a word. Um, if you just have an actual letter you could always, I mean, this is obviously way too big for this thing, but you could um, add that to the side on top of the leaves as well. I think it's just really whatever you think looks good, play around with it, hold it in place, take a step back, see if you like it, shift it around, you know. But you could either tie these onto the reef um, form if it's something small like this, just use a little bit of um, fishing line so that you can't see it and you can just tie that directly on or if it's something larger, you could actually glue that directly on with some hot glue. Um, another option, I was just remembering when I saw the fishing line, 
would be to actually have some leaves falling from your wreath and hanging there. So you would just take the fishing line and if you, um, when you're creating the leaf, you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap there at the bottom where that paper just doesn't attach. And you can tie the fishing line to those leaves. And then before you start gluing on all of these leaves to it, kind of tie these on so that you have some hanging uh, leaves coming down from your wreath as well, which is a, a cute little addition um, that you could do for your wreath. Kind of make it like a wall hanging almost. Add I'm loving all the extra ideas. <laughs> so that you could add some yarn tassels and stuff along it with that, but you can use some different ways that you can create that and really make it your own. Priyanka wants to know uh, what kind of line that was, the string. Um, this is just monofilament, I mean fishing line, monofilament. Um, it's hard to see off the roll, but it's just a, a clear, I mean, I think I actually got this from like Academy a long time ago, but I know that they have, you know, any sort of fishing line works, clear monofilament. All right. Anything else? I mean, I think we're going to wrap up here. Um, if you guys have some of your wreaths finished or in process, I'd love to see them and see those colors in person. If you want to hold it up, I can actually scan through and see some of you guys that have your cameras on. Ooh, I like this one. There's uh, Ilea Welch. I love the pops of colors that you used in yours. Those are really pretty. Oh, we've got some nice oranges and yellows there. And we got some rainbow colors. I like that. Colors of the rainbow, because I'm all about that. If you follow me on social, um, my tag for my handle is at Kylo Chic. But you'll see I love adding rainbows of colors to all the seasons. I just did some rainbow pumpkins and stuff. Oh, cute. Oh, I love the letter. Um, was, I, I don't know, Ruth, D-H, Ruthie. Um, oh, she just went off, but I liked hers. Nice, Alejandra. I love the pastels. All right, well, thank you guys so much. I enjoyed crafting along with you. I hope you did too. And I hope you, um, I hope you were able to get some ideas for different ways that you can create your own fun fall origami wreath or letter or wall hanging or wherever you choose to display it or napkin rings, what have you. Um, all right. I hope to see your creations. If you do post them on social, be sure to tag me. It's at Kylo Chic um, so that I can see them and comment and share that with some of my followers too. Um, all right. Bye guys.